Now in this set of videos, I'm gonna be sharing with you a section of an online course that I've just released. And the section that I'm sharing with you is all about sound design in Serum. We're gonna be going through the basics from oscillators, filters, and envelopes, all the way up to some more complex things like LFOs, macros, modulation, how to stay in key when you're writing bass lines, and so on. If you do enjoy these lessons and you wanna take your productions to the next level, then feel free to check out the completely free online course that I've just released which you can find in the description below this video. And in that course, I walk through a track from start to finish using just Ableton 10 plugins and Serum. Now let's dive into the videos. Hey, how's it going guys? And welcome to the second section of this online course where we're gonna be going through how I made the bass in this track. Now, we're gonna cover things like the patch in depth and I made this bass using Serum. So we're gonna go through that patch and I'm gonna give you that patch. We're also gonna go through things like how I stay in key when I write bass lines. And to start off with, just to get everyone up to the same speed, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the real basics of Serum and sound design just in this first tutorial. So if you're a Serum user and you know how sound design works and you know how Serum works, then feel free to skip this first video. But what we're gonna do now is dive into the real basics of this stuff so that you can understand how synthesizers work, what oscillators are, filters are, and envelopes are so that we can move on and I can explain how I use this to make the bass in this track. So let's start off with Serum just here. So this is what you're gonna see when you load up Serum for the first time. This is its uh, initial state. So the first part that we need to cover is the oscillators just here. Now. The oscillators in a synthesizer are the part that makes the noise. So all of the other parts of a synthesizer are just adjusting what's coming out of the oscillator, but the oscillator is the main noise generator in a synthesizer. Now you have different shapes uh, that can come in the oscillator. So Serum is a wavetable synthesizer. So we've got loads of different wavetables inside these oscillators and we can flick through them um, in these menus just here. So we're gonna we're just gonna stick with what we've got here but if i play a midi note uh, or a note just on this piano keyboard just down here you're gonna hear what that oscillator sounds like there we go so it doesn't sound um particularly great to start with but that is the raw sound that we work with and we shape using the other elements in the synthesizer now serum has four oscillators it has oscillator a and b here uh, which you can turn off and on by using these uh, squares just here. Oscillator B is also uh, a wavetable oscillator, so you can pick from different wavetables, which all sound different. And we've also got a sub oscillator and a noise oscillator. Now a sub oscillator um, basically gives out a really low frequency sound. Uh, so when you're making basses, that can actually come in really handy. And we've also got a noise oscillator, which can add white noise, pink noise, um, and loads of different things. We're not actually going to be using that in this tutorial, but it is really handy when you dive a little bit deeper into sound design. So they're the oscillators. The next section to cover is the filter. Now that does exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to filter out different parts of the sound. So for example, we're making a bass in this track um, and the filter works just like an EQ. So bass sounds typically have more low end frequencies uh, and less high end frequencies or they have a, more of an emphasis on the low frequencies. So we can adjust the cutoff, so whereabouts this filter is. And if I start playing a note, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this filter down and you can hear what that's gonna be doing, so. There we go, that's taking away the high frequencies and it's just leaving the low frequencies. Um, it's called a low pass filter uh, because it allows the low, low frequencies to pass. You've got loads of different types of filters in here. So if we go for a high pass, that's gonna do the opposite. It's gonna let the high frequencies pass uh, and it's gonna block the low frequencies. So uh, let's have a go at that. There we go. Now, as you probably could have guessed, we're going to be using uh, a low pass because we want to keep the low frequencies in and take some of the high frequencies out. But um, you can control the filter with these different dials down here, which we'll come into a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, the filter lets you filter out different frequencies that are coming out of the oscillator. Now, the final section we're going to be covering in this tutorial 
is envelope number one or the amplitude envelope or amp envelope as it will be called on other synthesizers. Now, essentially what this is, it allows you to control the volume of the synth over time while you're pressing and releasing a note. So there are four main controls that we're gonna be looking at here. We're gonna be looking at the attack time, the decay time, the sustain volume, and the release time. Now it's really important to pay attention to the values that these are displayed in. So the attack time is a time-based control. It's displayed in milliseconds. Decay time is also displayed in milliseconds. Sustained volume is explained in decibels. And release time is also in milliseconds. So we've got three time-based controls and one volume-based control. Let's start off with the attack time. The attack time is the amount of time that it takes the synth to get up to maximum volume after you've pressed a note. And you can think of it simply as a fade in. So at the moment, we've got no attack time. And when I press a note, you hear it straight away. But if we add one second of, or 780 milliseconds of attack time, it's gonna take that long to fade in. There we go, that's really simple. That's what attack time is. Let's put that back down to zero. The next control that I need to explain is sustain uh, because that makes decay much easier to explain. The sustained volume is the volume that the note is gonna stay at while you're holding down the note. So the easiest way to explain this is if I drop the sustained volume a bit to minus 12 dB, let's say. Um, when I press and hold the note, you're gonna hear the attack time is zero. So we're gonna hear the full volume of that note straight away, but the note is gonna sustain at minus 12 dB while I'm holding down the note. So let's have a listen to that. You can hear that it's not just staying at its maximum volume, which is what it would do if we had the sustain up full. But because we've dropped it a bit, it comes down to a slightly lower volume. Now, the amount of time that it takes to get down to that volume is the decay time, as you probably guessed. So, if we take the sustain all the way down to minus infinity dB, what we can do is we can use this decay time to determine how long that's gonna fade out to zero. It can either be really quick, but as we increase it, Can hear that gets much quicker. Now let's pop the sustain volume back up and give it a little bit of decay time. The final control is release time. Now release is essentially a fade out. If we refer to attack time as a fade in, the release is a fade out. So at the moment we've got 50 in milliseconds, which is barely audible to the human ear. Um, if we turn that up to one second of release time, when I press and hold this note, it's gonna sustain at the sustained volume, which at the moment is minus 6.9 dB. So let's have a listen to that. And that will just stay there until I release the note, which I'll do now. And then it takes one second to fade out. So sustain volume, release time. It's essentially a fade out. That's the easiest way to think about it. And they're the main controls that you have over the volume of the sound while you're pressing and releasing a note. Now in the next video, I'm gonna introduce you to a concept called modulation. Now you might have heard of it, you might have even used it, but I wanna explain it in a really clear terms, really, really quickly for you. And then we're gonna move on to what these assignable envelopes, LFOs and macros can do for you because they're all used in the bass sound that I made. So we're gonna get a little bit of an understanding as to what they do. Uh, and then we're gonna go in and look at how we applied them to this bass patch.